Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Alex Merced for another episode of Gnarly Data Waves, our weekly program on the latest and greatest of data trends and data news. Uh, this week, our topic is going to be migrating an Apache Superset dashboard to your data lakehouse. We're going to have my colleague, Dipankar Mazumdar, here to talk about all this great BI stuff, so that way you know what your options are and how to have that those performing dashboards uh, that will fuel your business insights. But of course, before we get started, there's always all some uh, housekeeping I like to do. First off, talking a little bit about what's going on in the data community. And one of the big events that are coming up in the data community is Data Day Texas, which is going to be on January 28th uh, in Austin, Texas. So if, you're, if you are going to be in Austin, Texas, stop by um, on that day. I will actually be doing two talks on Iceberg that afternoon. Uh, basically, all the who's who in the data world will be there. Um, Dremio is one of the sponsors, so do check that out. That's Data Day Texas on January 28th, Austin, Texas. Uh, as well, okay, again, the Data Lake House is great. And the best way to kind of find out, hey, how great is this whole Data Lake House thing is to get yourself hands on and take it for a test drive. So a quick way you can do that is head over to Dremio.com and start a test drive. It's free, requires no credit card information. You can just try it out, run a few queries, get a feel for, hey, what is this whole Data Lakehouse thing about? And another really big community event, it's going to be March 1st and March 2nd. It's going to be Subsurface Live. That's our uh, annual conference uh, about the whole, well, the Data Lakehouse. And you're going to have people talking about Apache Iceberg, Apache Arrow, about different Data Lakehouse implementation strategies, table formats, all sorts of really fun stuff. So make sure that you're there. We're just for the first time, we're actually going to have some live locations. So if you're interested in participating virtually or live, go register at dremio.com slash subsurface slash live slash 2023. And also the Data Hops Tour is coming to a city near you. So basically grab drinks for with many of the people here at Dremio and inside the data community and, and just, you know, talk data and uh, have a good time. So join us at the Dremio Data Hops Tour in a city near you. Uh, register now. You can go check those out over there at the events section of the Dremio website. And just so you know what's coming up in the coming weeks here at Gnarly Data Waves. So again, this week we're doing the uh, Apache Superset episode, but next week we'll be doing migrating Delta Lake uh, to Iceberg. Then we're gonna be doing optimizing Tableau dashboards with Dremio and then Apache Iceberg office hours. So a lot of great content coming. Uh, and this is again every week. So make sure that you come visit us every week so that way you can give us some Q&A, but also make sure to subscribe to the Dremio YouTube channel because you'll be able to see it there. And we'll be distributing it other ways as well. So just keep an eye out for that. And with that, uh, we're going to get on to the feature presentation of today. Okay, so I'm going to introduce my colleague, Dipankar Mazumdar, also a developer advocate here at Dremio with this amazing presentation on migrating an Apache Superset dashboard to your data lake house. Keep in mind, uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the Q&A box at the bottom. Okay, um, some questions, we'll try to answer questions as we go along, and there'll also be time at the end of the presentation to answer questions live. So with that, without further ado, Dipankar Mazumda, the stage is yours. Hey Alex, thank you so much. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this webcast. My name is Dipankar and today we are going to talk about building and most specifically migrating BI dashboards like SuperSwet to a data lake house. So let's get started. So a little bit of, about me, I'm, I'm currently a developer advocate here at Dremio and uh, right now I focus a lot on open source projects as well as the product itself. So some of the projects that I work on are Apache Iceberg, Arrow, Nessie, and pretty much in the open source uh, ecosystem, I'm pretty much there. Uh, in the past, I have worked in the intersection of machine learning and BI and data visualization as well. And uh, I'm pretty much active on LinkedIn and Twitter. So if you guys have any question after this webinar, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or Twitter, and these are my handles. So with that, uh, we'll move ahead with the agenda. And I'm going to keep it pretty straightforward um, in terms of the agenda. First, we will see how the dashboards are traditionally built today, right? on top of data platforms such as data warehouses. So that will basically understand like in general what happens in a traditional way of building dashboard. And then we will understand some of the problems that are usually seen with that traditional way, right? So we will understand some of the caveats that we have seen with the experiences in the past with the BI world. And then I'm going to introduce the Lakehouse architecture and the Dremio's Lakehouse platform, right? And then we will focus on our primary goal, which is migrating a dashboard to the Lakehouse. So what we will try to do is take a dashboard that has been built on a data warehouse or a cloud data warehouse and migrate it to a lake house in easy five steps. So I'm going to use Apache Superset, Superset for uh, the visualization purposes here to build a dashboard. 
But again, most of these steps are pretty much the same. Uh, so even if you use other BI tools such as Tableau or Power BI, the approach is going to be pretty much similar. It's just the way and the features in Superset might be a bit different than other BI tools. But the migration steps are pretty much the same. And finally, we will end with the benefits of this part new approach, right? We will try to understand what this new approach has bestowed us with, and you know, try to understand like if it can be beneficial for our organizations. So uh, let's uh, delve right into the discussion then. Um, every organization they consider dashboard a key asset, right, to support their decision making process. And we have established dashboards, um, you know, over the last decade. We have understood like the importance of it and how it helps uh, organizations and decision makers to make key decisions on that. So usually how it works is you basically have the decision makers who let's say want to use this dashboard to support their decision making, right? So they go like, hey, can we build a dashboard to understand some of the key metrics or let's say the product sales, uh, you know, for hypothesis. And then this request go to the BI and the analytics engineering team who typically say, sure, I mean, you know, let's do that. But first we need to get the right data to build this report, right? And what would typically happen at this stage is that your BI engineer or the analytics engineer would submit a new ticket to the data engineering team who are usually responsible for making that data available across the organization for various analytical workloads, whether it's uh, BI or machine learning uh, or whatever it is. So in most of the organizations today, this process of building dashboard uh, would probably look like you know, something like this. Okay. So this is what you know I have represented this in this five steps. But again, you know, there might be different other steps. You might have some other processes here or job involved in this. But in general, this would be the process. First, the data from the various sources are ingested into a cloud object storage like a data lake, right? You might have a data lake, you want to like dump the data in a data lake. And then for your reporting purposes, what you would like to do is you would not you'll not be able to you know use the data that is directly in the lake, right? You typically basically ETL into a cloud data warehouse, for example, Snowflake or Redshift or something like that, that kind. And once you have the data in the cloud data warehouse, uh, typically a subset of the data would be moved to a data mart. For example, like if you're building like um, the report for a particular sales team, you might just move a particular chunk of the sales data for your analysis, and then you don't have to work on the entire data set, right? And then for the performance benefits and advantages, uh, you might not need all the data. So what typically we do in the past is that we create BI extracts and use that extract to create the report, right? So that's the fifth step where you basically have an extract of the data and you create a report on top of, the, top of that extract. So even though from the front end side, you as a decision maker see a nice visual report, actually the back end part of building a dashboard can be quite cumbersome as you might have imagined uh, with a lot of stuff as we can see in this image. And personally, I have worked in uh, this space for long and I can pretty much confirm that this is how we have done things in the past when we have, we have to build the reports uh, and when the data is in the data lake and we're moving it across. Um, one important thing to note here is that from a business perspective, right, requirement changes very often. For example, we already might have a trend analysis chart today with uh, let's say existing calculations such as sum of sales amount, right? We want to do a sales amount of a total of the sales amount. But what if we want to analyze the results by let's say minimum or maximum of the sales amount? Right. With this traditional approach, this would require us to go through this n number of steps and processes before we can make that particular dashboard available to our stakeholders. Right. So, what I mean to say is that even for a change request, like a simple change in the calculations, we might have to even go through the same exact step of getting the data and getting the new data and putting it into a data warehouse and finally getting it us uh, into an extract and building the report from there. So. There are a couple of problems that we have seen in general with this traditional approach, right? And um, you know, I'm going to discuss a couple of them that kind of pops up in my head based on my experience and based on the industry trend and the uh, you know processes that we kind of follow. So the first thing is the long data wait, wait request, and this is like the, the budding issue that I personally have found in my career as well. So the turnaround time to satisfy a particular data request, right? Let's say it's a new or a completely new request or it's a change request just to change the particular dashboard. It greatly impacts the dashboard development and the dash decision making process. So the third, what I mean to say is that when you submit a ticket to the engineering team and finally being able to get the right data to derive your insight, that process usually is a very time taking process. And with the traditional approach, as we saw in the previous step, it goes through a couple of steps, right? And, and this is cumbersome, right? So it is important to have the right data at the right time so the insights can be relevant to us. Uh, what is the point of having a stale report 
with non-relevant data and with, when you cannot make a decision based on that, right? So long data weight because of the key problem that you usually see with like the traditional approach. Next, unmanageable data copies. One repetitive aspect in the diagram above in this one is that you can see like there are a lot of copy processes involved, right? So for example, we are moving data from one data lake to a data warehouse, and then we are moving it for performance and enhancement reasons. And over a period of time, these additional data copies would become unmanageable, right? As you can imagine, right? It can lead to a lot of other issues as we can like, you know, imagine, right? For example, there might be issues such as data drift, right? Model drift when you're building machine learning models, for example, or BI reports that depend on a particular data set, right? If you're managing data copies into different different location and different different, different part, it might be really difficult when you have new data coming in and updating those you know new records, right? That's a very important problem that again you see with the traditional approach. So we want to make sure that we don't end up with such unmanageable data copies process. We want to have data in one particular place or be able to at least query the data where it lives. That would be the best case. Next, it's limited to a specific data size. So the data requirements for building a dashboard, it may vary from task to task, right? You can imagine, right? You know, for example, um, there might be scenarios where, you know, in, when, an when an analyst requires access to a particular data set, right? And you're dealing with like the quarterly data, but then you might also require like the day-wise data, right? A granular level of data. Or let's say even the number of, you know, the data that you have, right? For example, you might have a, a, a data set with just two years of data but then you might also require data set with five years of data, right? So with the current traditional approach, the reports that you build are limited to a specific data size available in a particular data warehouse or the data mark or the extract that you created. So you kind of, as an analyst, you limit yourself to that particular data size and for any kind of new data that you want, again, you have to go through the same repetitive process of you know, raising a ticket and getting the data and you know, finally be able to build that report based on the data. So this is a very important uh, caveat as well that kind of uh, is super important when we have uh, BI reports to make in the process. Next, the dashboard performance overall. So with the increase in the data set size and the complexity, right? Uh, as you can imagine, the reports performance is also going to be impacted. So what I mean to say is that when you have a larger data set, there is the way you interact with the report is also going to be super important for your stakeholder experience, right? You know, ultimately, you want to let your analyst or your decision makers be able to ask as many analytical questions as they would like, right, for the decision making, right? But when you have a very slow performing dashboard with, you know, such a huge amount of data and like, you know, running it in a warehouse, it might lead to a lot of performance issues. So this is something that we want to take care. Next, the cost and overheads. Uh, there is a significant cost associated with running BI workloads on the data warehouses, you know. In the cloud data warehouses, for example, like, you know, when you run BI reports on top of that, there are costs involved for computing, right? There are costs involved for storage, right? You want to, if you want to like do analysis on larger data set and more amount of data that you want to bring in, you have to pay a cost for that. And even for any kind of query that you run for with a report on top of a warehouse, there is a cost for computing as well. So these are the costs that you might want to avoid because ultimately at the long term, when, you're, when your size increases and everything and you scale the report, this might lead to a lot of cost related issues. And leaving aside the monetary costs, there are also this overhead, right? Related to the uh, data engineers managing complex ETL pipelines or BI extracts and the operational costs involved in that process, right? To make the data available for reporting. So ultimately there's a lot of cost and non-monetary costs involved in this particular traditional approach, which we would like to avoid. And finally, the proprietary BI extracts. So, Extracts, they basically help optimize the dashboard performance, but they are also exclusive to a specific BI product. For example, if you're using Tableau today, it might be specific to that particular BI product only. So what this means is that another tool or workload cannot take advantage of these optimizations, these extracts that you created, which locks the businesses to a single BI tool and gives no flexibility to migrate to something that kind of better fits your new needs, right? I mean, you might, down the line, you might decide to go on with a different BI tool, but ultimately, if you are building extract for a, that is specific to a particular BI vendor, you might not have that flexibility for performance and and those kind of stuff. So at a high level, these are a couple of the problems that we see usually when working in a BI space and when, you know, based on experience and, uh, you know, processes involved within a data warehouse being the source of building the report.
So given all of this problem, what if we can have a data architecture that supports building reports directly on the data lake, right? What if we can have a data architecture that allows us to like, you know, query the data and like build report based on a data that is there in that particular data lake, right? We don't want to move it around. We just want the data to be there in the data lake and we just want to be able to build a report on top of that, right? And most importantly, when we're doing that, since we're dealing with a data lake and usually like when you're dealing, dealing with raw files, there might be performance issues and stuff, but we also want to meet the performance standards, right? What if we can meet those performance standards um, needed for a dashboard in the data lake? What if we have some way to do that? So the good news is that there is a new approach to building dashboards, uh, right? And that's what we are gonna talk about today. Uh, ultimately, the whole point is to reduce all those friction that we saw with all those caveats in, in the traditional way. And through this new approach, we are going to basically present how easy it is and how basically convenient and faster it is to make a report on top of the data link. And basically that way is the lake house way with driving us the lake house platform. So let me go and move ahead with the slide. And as you can see in this particular diagram, right? Uh, the Dremio query engine, which is Sonar, it is sitting right in between the data stored in the data lake and the client engine, which in this case is Apache Superset as a BI tool, and it can be anything else, right? So this is what is happening in this particular week. So Dremio's Lakehouse platform makes it pretty easy to access the data right where it is. And on top of that, it allows direct native integration with different BI tools and tools such as Superset to allow to build report directly on top of the data lake data. So what happens in this process is that we can now fire up live queries from the various BI tools such as Superset, right? We can just you know, run a query within, from Superset chart in one of the chart, and that basically fires up a live query directly on the data that is sitting in the lake, cloud data lake. And Dremio takes, takes care of that particular query by sitting in between, right? And this way we have the advantage of building the reports on top of the data. So the most important part that I wanna give a call out is that we can do all of this, right? And what matters a lot in the down the line is that we want to have superior performance um, in when we're dealing with the data in a data lake, right? We, with data warehouses, we had good performances, we know that. Obviously, we are paying a cost factor to that. But with a data lake, we never had that. So with the Lakehouse approach, with Dremio and the Lakehouse approach, we now have the capability to even accelerate those queries, right? Uh, using a process called reflections. So reflection is a feature in Dremio. Uh, and at a high level, basically, it's a query acceleration feature. So I'm not going to talk a lot about reflections today, but it's one of the steps that we're going to look at when, my, when I'm going to do the demo. And Basically, just to give a clear picture, you can think of it as a hybrid between the materialized views and indexes. And by using reflection, Dremio's query optimizer, what it does it, it can accelerate a query against the table or views rather than processing that particular data, raw data in the underlying data's physical source, right? And this is super critical when we're dealing with a large amount of data in billions in the data lake, right? And ultimately, as your size increases, as you're dealing with more amount of data for your analysis, we would like to have that kind of feature that helps us with those performance optimizations. So this is pretty much what we are going to, you know, take as a base and set up our, you know, next foundations on this and see how we can uh, build a report uh, and migrate a report that was built on a warehouse to a data lake house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly walk through five easy steps to do all of this. And that's all you basically need to do. It's as simple as that. So let's quickly dive into what our dashboard currently looks like. So this is what our dashboard looks like currently, right? For the purpose of demonstration, what I've done is this dashboard was built using a traditional approach. Uh, I first, you know, moved the data from um, a cloud data lake to a cloud data warehouse, okay? And in this case, I used basically um, a cloud data warehouse uh, called Snowflake, but it can be anything else like Redshift or anything else. And from there, we derived an extract of the data. So though we don't hit those performance limitations and cost limitations, right, in Snowflake and basically use that particular extract to build a report, this particular report, okay? So like I said, I'm going to go through five exact steps to migrate this particular dashboard. Uh, now the dashboard is running on top of a warehouse and I'm going to show you how to migrate this dashboard to a cloud data lake house that is driving. So let's deep dive into it. So the first step is basically to sign up for a free edition of Dremio Cloud and you can create a new Sonar project. So all you need to do is basically, you know, um, I can also quickly walk you through, but basically you have to go to this particular screen where you can just you know sign up for free with Dremio and you can like fill up your details and you will have uh, easy and open a fully managed Lakehouse platform already ready for you 
to take your analysis and build your reports or migrate to report on top of it, right? So once you're done with all this connect, all this you know setup and like configuration, uh, you should be able to create a first sonar project. And this is this is basically what you would see in like as a screen. Like you basically see this particular screen where you can add your own sonar project, right? The next step is basically once we have the you know once we basically sign up to Dremio, you know we should be able to get in a screen uh, like this where you will be able to get into the Dremio UI. It's the Dremio Cloud UI. And here we will be able to see our various connections, the various data sources, and the different virtual data set or the physical data set that we have. Okay. And over, over this, I'm going to like go to the second step just to show side by side, you know, what happens. So the second step is basically connecting Dremio to that data lake source. So let's say uh, for this particular demonstration, the data lake is the samples. Um, let's say I'm going to go to the Dremio screen. And as you can see, this is the object store section. This is the object storage section, which basically lists out all the data lakes. These are all S3 buckets. And this is the samples uh, bucket here. So let's say, imagine for this particular demo, this is the particular data lake that we have, right? And if we click on this, I should be able to see a folder called NYC Taxi Trips. And this is all of our data that is in our data lake. So now we use Dremio to connect to that particular data source, which is our data lake. And we now have that particular, we now see the data set that we kind of ETL into that particular data lake, which is the NYC text reading folder. Now, in this demo, obviously, I basically came to the object store and like showed you the already connected, you know, data source over here. But again, if you have to add your own, you know, S3 bucket or any other, you know, uh, storage system like me now, whatever it is, you can just basically go to add source. And uh, once you have the source, you can basically show that, you know, there are different, different sources here. Like there's S3 source, and you can basically go and you know give it a name and add your own source with all the details that you might require from Amazon AWS. Okay, so this is the way you basically link your particular data lake source to Dremio, right? And this is our second step. So, as part of the demonstration, I'm going to just show you how what I would typically do when I'm within Dremio. So what I would do is like if I'm going to go to my data source, which in this case is NYC Taxi Trips. And I am going to first create a virtual view of this particular data set. So when I say create a virtual view, is that basically we are going to operate at a logical level, then dealing with the actual physical data set. And also through this way, Dremio allows us to basically join and connect to multiple set of data set. Like even if something is there in a Postgres database or something is there in your GCS bucket or anything else, you can just basically you know, merge and connect to that kind of data set, different, different data sets and you can create your own virtual data set. So this is the first step we are gonna take over here. And what you, what, you, what you would typically do is basically give a name to the particular data set. And I'm going to just call it webinar demo and I'm going to save it to one of the spaces. Uh, spaces are basically different layers and separations that allows people to work in a particular data environment when they're building different data products. So if you click on save, now I will have this particular uh, webinar demo data set in the application folder. And you know basically if I run this particular query, uh, Dremio will show me a high level overview of you know the records that are there in this particular data set. Okay. Now for the particular for this particular demonstration, I'm not going to use the webinar demo data set. I already have created a data set called NYC full data set debunker. Uh, so it's basically the same data set that I use, but it's already configured to superset. So that way I don't have to spend a lot of time in you know uh, making those configurations there. But again, uh, you might reach out to me in case you might have any question. This is this, but this is pretty much simple. So our next step, uh, if we go to our presentation, is basically configuring Dremio in Superset and adding it as a new source. So this is where we have we are going to make that Dremio and Superset configuration, and this is a pretty crucial step, right? So to do that, there are a couple of prerequisites. Okay, first, Apache Superset. There's a there's a requisite sites on the Superset side as well. So first, Superset requires and SQL Alchemy dialect to be installed for each of the data source that we want to connect to. So if you go to the superset page, and if you go to the in install database driver, basically you can see that there are a lot of drivers you know, based on the different, different data sources that they have. So for Dremio, that data source is called SQL, that, basically, that particular SQL Alchemy dialect is called SQL Alchemy Dremio, okay? And you know, I've already pulled up the, the package over here, it's a Python package. So all you have to do is from, you know, when you, depending on how you install Superset, whether it's local or Docker base, uh, you will have to install this particular uh, package within that Superset installation 
for you to be able to configure Dremio with Superset. Now, I'm not going to go you know, in details about that configuration today, uh, but again, the Superset help page also has a lot of you know, helpful information as in how you can install database driver and you know, how you can connect to different, different data sources like Dremio, and you can read through this particular document. So, you know, it's, it's pretty much self-explanatory. So again, like I said, depending on how you install Superset, either it's locally or via containers, there are a couple of steps. Um, and again, you know, there, there you can find the steps over here. If you go to the installation and configuration, you can install locally using you know Docker Compose, or you can use it from you know install it from scratch, whatever means you want want to use it, you can go with that. And you know, it's pretty much self-explanatory. There are like probably three, four steps that you need to do it. And once you do it, you are done with the configuration of installation of Superset. And with the SQL Alchemy dialect package, uh, basically we now establish that connection between Renew and Superset. Okay. So assuming you have the connector installed, this particular connector installed, and you know you have uh, you know Superset installed locally or whatever it is in your container, we are now ready to create the connection to Renew from Superset. So that's our you know final step, right? So to do that, I'm going to go to the Superset page. Uh, this is where we have Superset running. Okay. And in this main page, what I had to do is I have to add Dremio as a data source. So to do that, you can go to the settings and go to the database connections. Now, as you can see, I have already have a couple of databases here. I already added Dremio before this webinar, but I'm going to just you know, quickly show you what to do in this particular screen. So now from here, what I have to do is click on plus database and it's saying select a database to connect, right? So on this particular list, you will basically have a set of supported databases for Apache Superset, Dremio is not yet a supported database, but if you're using the cloud hosted version of Superset, which is the preset cloud, uh, basically it's a fully hosted cloud service of Superset, Dremio is already a data set, uh, database in, super, in preset. However, for the open source version, you will have to select other here. Okay, and once you're in this particular screen, basically you have to do is define the configuration settings over in the SQL Alchemy URL. Okay, so this connection setting would look typically something like this. I'm going to just put it over here. Okay, so this is exactly the same thing that you have to do. So all you have to do, is you're, all basically you're doing is like defining the connection with Dremio and Superset. So what you have to do, the first thing is, you know, you have to give the, the cloud URL of Dremio and then the port that it is running on. And these are pretty much templated. And once you have that, you have to get a token from Dremio. Now, to do that, what you have to do is you go to the Dremio screen, and once you're in the account setting, you can go to the personal access token here, and you can generate your new token, okay? So that's all you have to do. You have to get the token from here, and once you have the token, you can basically go to Superset and provide this particular token over here, and you can leave the remaining two fields. So, you know, those are the properties that you would typically need. Once you're done defining this particular connection, you will have just have to click test connection. Uh, obviously, in this case, we haven't defined a right connection, so it's failing with an um, error. But once you have this particular connection defined here, you should get a success message over here and you should be just good to go and go and connect and be able to connect to your data source. So I've already, like I said, I've already made the connection over here with the Dremio cloud and it's exactly the same step that I took, okay? So now, and now what we have done at, until this point of time is basically we have created a connection between Dremio, Superset, and we also added a Dremio as a database over here, right? So now we have access to that, all the data set that they kind of created within Dremio, right? Remember the data set that I created in Dremio, which is like the NYC full taxi data set, right? So now we have access to all of this particular data set within Superset now, and we can run a report on top of this particular uh, data set. So the next step would be, uh, once you're done defining the database, what you have to do is you have to create a basically create your own database uh, data, right? So what you can do is you can go to the data sets and you can create a data set. And in this particular screen, I'm going to select Dremio cloud as my data source or the database. And from the schema, I remember I, you know, save the particular data set in application. So I'm going to put it to application. And then my data set was NYC full text debunker. I'm going to select this. And once I say add data set and create chart, it says the data set already exists because the, this, this data set already is existing in my way. But if I create a different you know, data set, for example, like a webinar demo that we just added, right? I can just basically you know, add the data set and create a chart on top of that. Now, whatever chart I want to create from this, I can create based on this particular data set that I have. 
Okay. Now for the demonstration purpose, I'm not going to use a webinar demo. It's pretty much, it's exactly the same data set that I'm using. I'm just using a different data set over here as a connection. Okay. So that's our basically the third step, which basically allows us to connect Dremio and Supercell. Okay. For the next step, uh, again, this is the final step kind of like, which is where, this is where we are changing the database connection in each of the chart that we had uh, based on a data warehouse to a data lake house, right? So what I'm going to do is if you go to Apache Superset and you know I go to charts, I already have a dashboard where basically, you know, I, I created using it's the using the data warehouse data. So as you can see, let's say this particular data source, right? Like this particular data source right now is connected to this the data warehouse data. You know, uh, sorry, this is not connected to the data warehouse data. I'm going to take a different one here. Let's say it's average pair teeth and long. Right. So this is, as you can see, this is an extract of a data. Okay. This is just the aggregation of a data. Right now, it's connected to uh, Snowflake as a data warehouse. Um, you can see this error because I'm not connected to Snowflake yet. And you know, um, I basically want to do this show how you can change this particular data set, and that's all you need to know. Okay. So this dashboard initially would have been running with the data on a data warehouse. So as part of the fourth step, what I have to do is I have to change the data source for each of these charts and change it to my Dremio data lake house data set, right? To do that, I'm going to go to change data set. And, you know, I have my, basically my data set over here. You know, I will select the NYC full data set defunker. And it says, you know, warning changing the data set may break the chart if the metadata does not exist. And that's fine, you know, it's fine. We have all the, basically all of our fields are pretty much the same. Uh, it's just that some of the extract fields are kind of like different in Snowflake. So I'm going to say proceed. And once I proceed on this, uh, I can add my values from over here. As you can see, I can see all the data columns that were there in Dremio. I can see basically over here now in Superset, right? So I'm going to quickly add like, uh, just to demonstrate it, like I'm going to just quickly add a few fields. I'm going to just do an average of fair amount. And for the right metric, I'm going to use uh, the average of the tip amount. So this is a chart where I'm building basically analysis of average and the fair and the tip. Once we do this and update the chart, we should now see the chart rendered. Okay, now we have the chart rendered. And this rendering is happening. This query that we basically ran is directly happening on the data, directly on the data lake, which Dremio as a lake house platform is facilitating. It. So each and every single query that, or that we run with each of our chart is basically a query that is running directly on the Dremio lake house end. Okay, so one important thing, just to just so I don't miss it over here, is that there are always limitation when using an aggregated data set from a warehouse, since we cannot access the original data fields, right? As you can imagine, right? When you derive an extract of a data set based on the warehouse data, you might not be able to, you know, have access to all the field that you would require. And then you would fail to apply any transformation, any new calculations that you want to do on the fly on the reporting side. So to use any new calculations in your dashboard, you'll have to go through the usual repetitive landing process of requesting the data and then updating the report. However, with this lake house approach, we are not limited to that. We basically have all the fields available to us as in, as in the data source that we have, as in the data lake that we had. And all we have to do is create a transformation as we want in the, in the, in the BI tool and create the calculation as we would like. Okay. So this is the step that you basically take to change your connection from data warehouse to your data lake house data set. Okay. Now, once you do this and save it, you should have the chart change. And I'm not going to do it for every single of them, but this is just a way to show that, you know, you have all these charts changed to the data lake house data, okay? So after we make all of these changes, uh, we now have our dashboard migrated to a uh, data lake house. So I'm going to quickly pull up that report um, and I'm going to just show, if I go to this, this is my dashboard. So now I have my dashboard that is basically running each of these charts that I have created is running on the data directly on the data lake, okay? And each of the query that I fired from here is running directly on the data lake data. So one important thing to analyze, you know, just stress out here is that each of these live query that I run here, you know, any kind of like query that I run, any kind of like, you know, report that I'm building over here or filtering the data over here, I am dealing with a third of a billion of rows over here. Like it's 330 million of records and that's a huge amount of records, okay? So like you saw, the dashboard didn't even take much time to render, right? So it's probably like a few seconds to render the data, but 
that's the performance, the edge that you have with Dreamio being the lighthouse platform. And for the final step, we're going to see how to optimize that in a way. Uh, it's an optional thing, but you know that's something also will give you a lot of performance benefits in terms of the Daniel performance. Okay. So that is basically the entire five uh, four steps that you need to do. So what we did is just to go, you know, and take a recap. We basically created a new Dreamio Sonar project. We added a new Sonar project, and from that we created a virtual data set from our actual data source, data lake data, and we have it in our application layer. And what I did after that is we basically, you know, connected that Dremio to the data lake source. Like I said, we have the data over here. Once we have connection to that data lake source, we are ready to connect Superset and Dremio, which is what we talked about with all those configurations, all those prerequisites, and, you know, Dremio being, the, you know, the database within Superset, right? So once you are done with that, the final step was to change that particular, so you already have the data report, that reporting the dashboard, you already had it. So what you're doing is basically replacing each of the chart source from the warehouse to the data lake house. And that's all we did in the change data set, as you can see in this image, right? For the final step, and that's the last step, and like I said, you know, Dremio provides a feature called reflection, which allows us to optimize the dashboard and take it to the next level, okay? And like I mentioned, this is probably an optional step for you, like and it all, there's a strategy to define reflection and all those steps, but this definitely should allow data stakeholders to interact with the dashboard in a more faster way. And depending on the cost of the you know optimization and those kind of things, Dremio will make the decision, obviously. But ultimately, the whole point is that we want to have our analyst and the decision scientists to take advantage and have a really good interactive experience when they're using the dashboard, right? And since we're dealing with a large amount of data in the data lake, that is more critical than ever. Okay. So one important thing to note here is that we are going to see like a quick demo of how to enable reflections on the Dremio site and, it, and see basically if there is an improvement and those kind of stuff. But one important thing to note here is that even if you enable reflections on Dremio site, Dremio's cost-based optimizer will evaluate. If a particular query that you are basically executing, it will evaluate whether that particular reflection to be used or not. Because there might be scenarios when sometimes the Dremio's cost-based optimizer might just decide to just not go with a reflection, not use it, okay? And so that's why it's kind of like, a, a, a good, it's a good thing to have uh, so that if you have some uh, materialized view kind of thing, your queries are obviously gonna be faster and that way you don't have to every time deal with the physical data set, right? So in order to enable reflection, what I'm going to do is, what I have in this particular dashboard is a couple of filter. So all I'm going to do is just, you know, select a couple of them and, you know, basically clear, the filters and see how our dashboard responses, you know. And most importantly, I want to show you how to create a reflection in Dremio. Uh, and for that, you have to go to the particular data set. Uh, I'm, I'm already, I already have a reflection over here, but let me just quickly show you in the data set that we created on the fly in this particular webinar. So if I go to this particular reflection tab, that is where I'm going to define my reflection, okay? Now there are two kinds of reflection. One is the raw reflection uh, and one is the aggregation reflection. Raw reflection is basically used for those um, you know, needle in the haystack kind of type of queries when you don't know what you're hitting and those kind of queries. But since we're dealing with aggregated data with BI reports and stuff, we're going to use the aggregation reflection. And as you can see, Dremio has suggested a couple of, you know, dimensions and measure as part of this aggregation reflection. But obviously you have the option to, you know, remove it and, you know, use it in a way that you would like to use it. So what I'm going to do in, for our particular use case, what matters is that, okay, the passenger count is not really a dimension. It's a count of the passenger. So it can be a measure, but I'm going to remove it from here and I'm going to just keep the pickup date time, okay? And in terms of the measure, I don't need the trip distance MI. I'm not really using it in my dashboard. So I can, I could typically just add another measure over here, which is like the, the fair amount from me, or I already have the fair amount. I can just use the passenger count over here, okay? And once I click on this particular thing and just you know enable this particular toggle and save on it, a job will start running that basically says, you know, a reflection job is going to, you know, run and based on that, it's going, Dremio is going to activate that reflection for you, okay? So, like I said, I already have a reflection enabled for our data set. And as you can see in the reflection tab, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, it already have the aggregation reflection on. So, basically, if I go to my dashboard and after the reflection job completes, just so you know, you will have the checkbox like this and then it will show you footprint of that particular job. So, if I go to the particular report and, you know, Let's quickly see if a reflection works here in or, or not. I'm going to select a couple of the dates and then the see apply filters. 
And when I apply a filter, obviously we are dealing with, like I said, a third of a billion records here. So obviously the response time is going to be a bit more, but obviously, as you can see, it's, it's not even more than like four or five seconds. So, you know, that's not bad, even for a report of this quality, right? And when I go to my jobs, um, just, let me just quickly re reload this particular thing. I can see that right now, I know it's 247. So I can see that each of this particular query, basically the dashboard rendered with all the report, you know, all the you know fields that it had. And as you can see, each of these queries are basically a live query within Revio, right? You see that the filters that I made, I, I made the selection in this particular filter. You can see those selection over here, even in Dremio. So basically each and everything is running via Dremio directly on the data lake source. Okay. So now if I clear the particular reflection, uh, you know, that particular filter and say clear all, I should have the dashboard render quickly. As you can see, it's quickly rendered. And if I go to my jobs now and do a reload, I can see a uh, accelerated icon over here. And you can see the it says query was accelerated, right? And as you can see, each and every query took less than one second to just, you know, render the queries, right? To rerun the queries. Uh, so it's a great improvement from just five second waiting for five second and five second here, three second here, to literally have run those queries in just one second, less than a second. So that's really amazing. And as you can see in the job, you can see this particular button over here that says reflection you use. I can see that there is an aggregation reflection that has been used in this particular case that the one that, that I defined and basically demonstrated over here. Okay. So now we have a more accelerated report and anything that we kind of run over here is going to be super fast. And, you know, obviously Superset has its own caching mechanism, but this is on top of the data that we have in terms of the physical data and the logical data. So this is really an exciting feature to have uh, and Dremio facilitates that kind of feature, right? So even for a huge data set record, like a third of a billion, like I said, it's really amazing to have that query run in less than a second, okay? So that is what is basically the entire demo. Uh, I think the one last part that I want to cover quickly is uh, the benefits, right? You know, we went over a new approach. We went over a new way of building reports and dashboards. So let's look at some of the benefits it has to offer, okay? So a few of them, the first thing is basically we saw how we can run our dashboard on top of the data lake house directly, right? Uh, and, you know, we have faster turn turnaround time for any changes to the dashboard, for example, if I have to make a new change to that particular dashboard, if I have to create a new chart with some new data or even create the chart with some new data uh, in that particular superset dashboard, all I have to do is basically just bring that field that is already available to me in Radio Lake House. Okay. I don't need to worry about like, you know, um, you know, requiring changes to the BI extract, you know, the data warehouse structure changes, the ETL process that a data engineer would might have to run and those kind of things to bring in the data. And not to mention, right, one important factor that we often like underlook is the backlog, right, on the part of the data engineering team who are bombarded with this kind of request every single time they get this request. Um, they ultimately, which impacts a lot on their, you know, uh, their work as well. And on the part of the decision makers, it impacts a lot with the decision making process. So when you have faster way to do changes, you are not hes hesitant to even make a change, right? Secondly, the dashboard response time, right? It remains interactive in nature. Although the data size and the complexity has increased a lot. So remember our dashboard was initially a report that was running on the data on a cloud warehouse, right? Data warehouse. Uh, and that was just an extract of a data. And the response time was pretty much the same, even with the extract. And now here we have close to a billion rows of record, right? And the performance wasn't even a limiting factor in all of this with such a huge data set. So that's that's a plus point, right? Next, we can now save a lot in terms of the operational and infrastructure costs, right? This is due to the fact that the access and optimization and everything is happening on a cost efficient platform like Dremio, right? Dremio Lakehouse platform already facilitates that. And now we are analyzing the data directly on a cloud data lake. Uh, you know, we are not paying the cost of compute to us, uh, you know, uh, data warehouse storage engine or a compute engine, right? Uh, data lakes are extremely cheap, right? That's why we, they, have, they are in, in demand. And all I have to do is basically have a way to connect that data to the data lake using Dremio. And finally, we can eliminate the process of copying data and having it in multiple places. And this allows us to avoid issues such as data drift and model drift that kind of like I touched upon in the beginning of the webinar. And since we are building report directly on the data lake, we have no need absolutely to move data around and you know deal with unmanageable data copies, uh, you know, copies lying around and those kind of things. So 
that is basically some of the you know high level you know on top of my mind that comes with the benefits with this newer approach and i think uh, we can all you know embrace this particular new approach and see what benefits it has to give from a practical standpoint when we are really leveraging that uh, in a practical way in our organizations so that is everything that i wanted to present uh, thank you so much um, and i'll i'll see you on the q and a hey, welcome and to the Q&A portion of today's evening. So again, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box so that way we can see, um, you know, answer them live here on the presentation with Deepankar on the line, okay? And again, Deepankar, thank you for that great presentation for showing us all how we can get performing BI directly from our data lake, giving us sure. all those benefits. Um, but in the meantime, is we have our first question, okay? Is that Dremio SaaS? So basically, is Dremio software as a service? Yes, so this demo has been on Dremio Cloud, Dremio SaaS, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, like if you are in other like software version, you can also leverage that uh, the same configuration as well. But this is the demo was in uh, Dremio SaaS. Yes, got it. Okay, and again, just to summarize, again, basically, there are two ways to use Dremio: Dremio software and Dremio Cloud. So if you're on AWS, I would steer your way towards Dremio Cloud. But if you're using uh, Google Cloud, uh, Azure on-prem storage, then I would direct you to check out Dremio software. Um, good times. And you can always test that out by going to Dremio test drive over there at dremio.com. Next question. What are the compute implications, cost, latency for superset and Dremio? Yeah. So in terms of the, like the standard edition of Dremio, Dremio is, com you know, completely free. So, you know, you're free to run over and use a couple of the free, you know, uh, compute units that Dremio already comes with that free version, but there is also the enterprise version uh, and I can share more details on the pricing and stuff. Uh, after the webinar, but uh, yeah, definitely like on the superset side, um, I'm not exactly sure because like superset is kind of like open source part, but there is this preset, which is the cloud managed version of superset. So I think they have their own pricing and implications, but that's also something that we can share with. And I can also take up the follow up, which is any size limit maximum billion of rows for data set. Um, I do, I haven't you know particularly experimented something more than a billion as of now, but I I, I would definitely believe there is no size limitation. Dremio handles it pretty much in a in a way that kind of like using native technologies like arrows and stuff. So I think there is uh, you know Alex, do you think that there is a limitation of such kind in Dremio or I don't think so. Uh, no, it just depends on sort of like again what you're willing to do as far as your scaling goes. So basically in Dremio you have a lot of different ways to kind of handle very large loads. So as, as Depanker mentioned earlier, you have reflections. So reflections. Is going to reduce that compute by creating like those like you know nice smart materializations behind the size but at the same time dremio also has a lot of auto scaling features when it comes to compute so essentially um you can set different uh depending on what your settings are for concurrency what your size of your your instances are and things like that you're going to be able to handle different workloads so basically you can always scale up compute to handle larger workloads and then reflections can make basically make the points where you need to do that a lot later so you'll be able to handle a lot more with a lot less compute because of reflections and patchy arrow and Dremio's other uh, speed optimizations. But Dremio also has a feature so that way you can scale up when you need to and then quickly scale back down so that way you don't have instances running for longer than they really need to to keep those costs under control. Perfect. Well, next question. We have Dremio on cloud formation AWS. Will, will the reporting work out there? Yeah, I mean, depending on the BI tool that you want to use, uh, I mean, uh, need, Dremio provides native integration with tools like Tableau and Power BI. Uh, Superset is something that is uh, uh, is a super in a separate connection, like I presented in this particular demo. But definitely, you know, you have the option to you know use different BI tools with AWS CloudFormation on Dremio, and I think you know those work options are you know pretty much out there as well. But with Superset, like if you're specifically talking about Superset, you know, you have to probably deal with these uh, connections uh, and the things. Uh, that requires some superset N as well. Okay, next question. Can you create a federated dashboard in superset on Dremio based on two plus data sets, one from Ergo Snowflake and one from on-premise RD, uh, RDBMS, like uh, Oracle right. or MySQL? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the you know great benefits that Dremio has to offer. I know in this particular case, what you typically do is you will basically use Dremio to you know connect to different kind of data sets. For example, it can be a cloud data warehouse or it can be like a RDBMS. And you can basically do different type of transformation or joints on top of them and create your own logical and virtual data set. So, you know, once uh, I think I, I I think I definitely like mentioned in the presentation as well that, you know, how you can basically, you know, confirm a join and you know transform those data set from different different worlds 
And once you have that virtual data set, it kind of gets easier when you're getting into superset and you know just dealing with a particular you know uh, mixed data set. Okay, uh, does superset not support Dremio on prem? Well, I have to start with uh, Dremio, the uh, on-premise version as well. So, you know, basically the connection and everything remains the same. So Dremio is connecting with Superset on with the cloud, with the software version as well. So pretty much everything, like I said, remains the same. It's just that, uh, you know, the connection string and the configuration parameters would be probably different as from the SAS one. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, 100%. And I just like a little addition to that. It's like a lot of these like services are kind of connecting through like, Dremio's different like APIs or ODBC whatnot. So regardless of the location, ODBC, an ODBC connection, an arrow connection, a REST API connection, generally is going to work the same. So it should work with software or on uh, or cloud. But yeah, like, like Defanker said, the settings would be different. Next question, Defanker, Superset, oh, we just answered that question. Dremio on AWS does not support <laughs> ADLS Gen 1. Does it work on Superset 2? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure, you know, because I have never experimented with this. And I don't know if, Alex, you have done it, but we can get back to you, you know, uh, based on, you know, further resources and stuff. But unfortunately, I haven't, I cannot be sure of this. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure on this one as well. Um, only thing I would say is that at the end of the day, like, whatever BI tool you're using, it won't necessarily matter what with the data source eventually is because basically Dremio is acting as the arbiter. So it just matters that whether whatever version of Dremio you're using supports a connection to that data source. And then you can feed it to any of the BI tools that support Dremio, which is just about all of them. So whatever BI tool you want to use. Um, so what matters more is like whether the data source connects to Dremio. And if you're using the AWS CloudFormation or you're using software, there's often different types of like community plugins to add uh, additional connectors. If you're using Dremio Cloud, then you know it's based on what's currently available in in the SaaS product, um, which is constantly expanding. So more connectors are going to constantly be added, uh, and some very soon. Um, so it'll just depend on like what does Dremio connect to more so than whether uh, Superset or Tableau or Power BI supports that specific data source. Uh, another challenge: we have a lot of data in Gen One. We have told to use an executable version. The way so SaaS was the option to look ahead. Yeah. Um, right. Got it. Yeah, I think I, I think I, I understand the point here. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I know, you know, probably we will have to like look out for like you know new connectivity option like Alex mentioned, like you know what kind of storage are supported more in Remu as we like you know come up with new features and like support. Yep, and then uh, Azure uh, Azure support on the SaaS version is in uh, is definitely on the roadmap. So, um, right. so basically expect that. I, I'm not gonna give a date, but that is, is, is on the roadmap. So uh, basically right now, the cloud SaaS version mainly supports AWS, but Azure will be sort of next in line. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And that and then that situation, you should have support for all of that. Cool, cool, cool. I think that is all the questions. Okay, awesome. You, uh, um, yep, any, any, before, any final words or thoughts? Yeah, I think before I end, I think I'm, I'm gonna take one more question that I see right now. Uh, it says, uh, what are the performance aspects when running a superset dashboard directly on a lake house? Um, I, I think, you know, it's pretty much in that's that I, I think I covered a bit on this as well. It's just that, you know, superset has its own caching mechanism and stuff. And uh, with Dremio, you know, obviously natively we are using like, you know, great open source technologies like Apache Arrow and stuff. And with that also we have like reflections and features like this that are kind of like materialized views and like in a hybrid between indexes. So obviously that kind of gives you that performance edge that you would typically required when you're dealing with large amount of data in a data lake, because you know it's a data lake and obviously you want to deal with more amount of data for your historical analysis. But yeah, those are the kind of like, you know, performance things that you would typically look out when you're migrating from a cloud data warehouse to a data lake house for your reporting purposes. Uh, and Dremio facilitates all of them. So that that's all. Cool, cool, cool. Again, th thank you so much for what was an amazing presentation to Pankar. Uh, very excited. Oops, almost knocked out my uh, headphone there. But again, just remember that this is going to be every week, same bad time, same bad place. Next week, we're covering migration from Delta Lake to Iceberg. Also, um, again, this gets posted to our YouTube channel, the Dremio YouTube channel. So uh, subscribe to the Dremio YouTube channel. So that way, you know, if you can't make it live, you can always make sure you catch catch it after the fact. And then soon, it, you should also start seeing uh, gnarly data waves showing up in a podcast directory near you. So keep an eye out for that for all you podcast listeners. And with that, we're going to call it a day and we will see you all next week. Thank you again to Pankar. And thank you everyone for joining us today.
Thank you, everyone. Bye.